Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. How are you guys doing this Gorga day? And if you don't know what that is, it means gorgeous. Period. How are you guys doing today? Hope you guys are doing fantastic. I am so excited for today's video. Y'all saw that? Thank you, Jimmy. So today, guys, I went to Sephora and I bought the entire store, it feels like. I dropped so much coin, so much money on top rated five star Sephora makeup versus the lowest rated Sephora makeup. So I'm gonna do kind of two sides and see if the ratings are correct, what I think of them, and do I think that you should even listen to reviews or not? We'll see, we'll find out. Half of these are like five star, the best of the best at Sephora, and half of these are like two threes. Uh, but that's what he's gonna be. We're gonna test out the two side by side and see what we think. Also, huge shout out to Alpha H for partnering with me in a portion of today's video. I'm gonna be showing off the Alpha H Melting Moment Cleansing Balm later on today. That's this guy right here. Oh yeah. She gets some love from me. She gets some love from me. I love when brands wanna work with me when it comes to like melting bombs. You know what I mean? Like any brand that wants to work with me in melting bombs, I think it's because they know I'm a connoisseur. They know I'm a melting bomb connoisseur. Okay, and they know that about me and I love that. So when Alpha H reached out to me and they're like, would you like to try the Melting Moment Cleansing Balm? Potentially work with us on it. And I was like, yeah, for sure, let me try it out. You guys, I am a double cleansing kind of girl and that is who I will be to the day I pass. Okay, I am that girl and I will always be that girl. When I tell you that the Alpha H Melting Moment Cleansing Balm, I think it's my number one. And I'll explain why later. So anyway, shout out to Alpha H for partnering with me in a portion of today's video. I'm so excited to show you guys the product. Of course, link it down below. But let's go and get into these goodies. Some of these things I did have, so I didn't have to spend as much money, but I still dropped hundreds and hundreds, if not of dollars at Sephora to accumulate all these top rated and lowest rated products. So let's just go ahead and get right into it. I'm really, really excited to do this video. I think it's gonna be so much fun to try out the best and the worst. But that's it, you guys. That's today's video is going to be. As always, if you guys like this video, if you guys don't like me, please don't fucking watch it. You know, do that. But if you guys do like this video, if you guys like testing Sephora goodies, if you guys like the gays, girl, I am living. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Uh, but yeah, let's go get started on today's video. Okie dokie, you know what I'm gonna do while I'm taking everything out? I'm gonna swatch a couple of liquid lipsticks on my hand, let them dry, I'm gonna show you guys the melting bomb right now, just so you can see the gaggery of it, and then later on we'll take it off together, and I'll show you guys the real tea after the video's done, but I'm gonna, I just wanna show you guys a little bit of tea. We're gonna let these bad boys dry real quick. It is literally, truly, I think the best cleansing balm I've ever tried. And that's saying something, because I've tried a lot. I tried a lot. And the thing is, I think why is because it's actually really hydrating and nourishing on the skin after I clean my makeup. Because usually when you're taking your makeup off, a lot of the times it feels like a little drying on the skin. This one does the exact opposite. It literally hydrates my skin when I'm taking everything off. So we're gonna take a little dollop of this really quickly. So usually when I'm using this, I'll use the balm and start to really melt away the products. And what you do is you wet it with water and you activate it and it becomes a little milk. It becomes a little milk. So I'm gonna go ahead and see what we do with this. We're just gonna wipe. Just you wait till I do it at the end when we take off this mug. Y'all are gonna scream. Okay guys, so let's move on to our first products first. And let's do with primer. I think right side's gonna be our five star. Left is gonna be our less star. So we got our best and we got our worst right here. Best was highly rated. This is the Pore Eclipse Mattifying Primer from Milk. That is like top rated, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, wonderful. Talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular. I've never tried it before, so I'm really excited to try this out. And one of the lowest rated was the Laura Mercier Pure Canvas Primer in Perfecting. So I'm gonna go and try the Milk side first. Ooh, comes out white. Kind of inappropriate, but here we are. And it feels like, wow, it feels like a really lightweight moisturizer. Huh, okay. So I can see immediately that it definitely, definitely takes away my shine, like instantly. Not like where it's so matte, where it looks like, oh Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Like it looks deathly, but enough to where like, it's definitely more on this, on the matte side. And I do feel like my pores look smaller on this side and it's cooling. Like I feel like my face feels cold, especially when I fan it. It's cooling as 
Whoa. I'm excited to keep using that. And now we have Miss Laura Mercier. Why are you so poorly rated? Let's see. Okay, so this feels like a water moisturizer. Like it literally feels like, imagine what a moisturizer feels like that's water-based, that's this. It feels like a water moisturizer. So let's see how this kind of like does, if it does any, why is this side getting red? Don't start with me. What does the Laura Mercier claim to do? Silicone free, okay, seamless makeup application, breathable formula, skincare barrier. Okay, okay, flawless canvas for makeup application and extended wear. I'll see about that. I don't think anything happened. I think it literally just felt like a moisturizer. I literally don't know what difference it actually made other than moisturizing my skin slightly. It's not tacky at all. It dried completely. This one, this side feels matte, the milk side. This one doesn't feel matte. What's going on? Next, you guys, we have our top and our lowest rated foundations. Top rated, one of the top, top rated is the Beauty Blender Bounce Skin Tint. This is a always on radiant skin tint, so we're gonna be trying that out. I grabbed the shade three, and the lowest rated was the Tarte Amazonian Clay 16 Hour Full Coverage Foundation, which is really sad because back in the day, I really liked the Tarte Full Coverage Foundation, but I had seen a lot of people said that the formulation changed and that'll get you every time. It's it's rough when you change out the formulas, you know? It's rough out here. So let's do our little skin tint on the right side. Shake before use, applying with a damp beauty blender, which makes a lot of sense. Apply with a damp beauty <laughs> from Beauty Blender, duh. Um, I have a different sponge I'll be using. We're taking shade three. I wanted shade four, but they didn't have a shade four and they were stupid. We're gonna pounce this in, it is skin tint. Was three the right decision? It might have been. It might have been. To me, this is not giving a skin tint. This is giving like a medium coverage foundation. <laughs> it's not giving tint, it is giving coverage. So that's a little spooky, like kind of a sheer medium coverage foundation. Okay, okay, what do you guys think, what do you guys think? Yo, it's blending in so nice, like it's looking beautiful, blends in so nicely, and it gives such a small amount of coverage, such a small amount of coverage, but it definitely does give you some. I would say this is definitely more coverage than a skin tint. I do feel like it just low-key perfected my skin. I really do. In my opinion, allegedly, it looks stunning. So now let's go with our Amazonian Clay 16 hour full coverage. This is gonna be a much different situation, I believe. On the left, it's gonna be a much different situation. This is gonna be giving us 2016, and this is gonna be giving us 2022. I grabbed the shade 26N, by the way. So we're gonna be trying that on the other side of the blender. Oh, it's, it's, real, it's real thick. Light, medium, neutral, 26N. Okay, so to me, it's giving cadaver gray. It's giving cadaver, it's giving death to all of them. Death to all of them. And I will say the consistency, you can't tell me that's not gray. <laughs> you can't tell me that's not freaking gray. I will say I do think the consistency has changed since it first, when I first used it years and years and years ago, it was, I felt like it was moussey, but it was, this is like thick mousse. And the other one didn't feel nearly as thick in my opinion. This one feels a lot thicker than it used to. Still gives you insane coverage. As you can see, a lot, a lot of coverage. And also like the shade is just so wrong. It's so wrong, so wrong. And I know it might look the same to you guys, but I promise you it is giving cadaver gray. I promise. Can you see on my phone? Maybe you can see on my phone. Right side, we have the beauty blender sign, which I think is really pretty and I like it so far. This side is the tart side. I'm gray. So this side, obviously more coverage. It feels drier. <sighs> it looks more matte, which is so strange because I had a more hydrating primer underneath the side. This side, this side had a mattifying primer and it still looks radiant. I don't like the color. Don't like the consistency. It feels really heavy. I feel bad. I feel bad, but I like it. I don't like it. Okay, so it's concealer time. We have top rated and we have bottom rated. We have tops and we have bottoms. And then we have both, like me. Um, we have top rated, one of the top rated concealers on Sephora is the Huda Beauty Faux Filter, which is something I was so excited to see on the when I was scrolling and I was like, oh, 
This is literally one of my favorite concealers. I think it's so incredible. I truly love it. I put this on my cousin for her wedding. I glammed her. I use this concealer. It's amazing. One of the lowest rated concealers is this one. I try to get the lowest rated one, which is actually the Natasha Denona Trans Fix Concealer. I've used it before. It is literally hell. I've used it several times. It's the one that's like in a white bottle. You put it on. If you don't blend immediately, it dries so fast and matte. It's probably one of the worst concealers I've ever tried, ever. I, I couldn't get it. Like I could not find it anywhere and I've already like got rid of it my own personally because it was just... So one of the other worst ones is actually the Creaseless Concealer by Tarte. I got a mini because I'm like, what if I don't like it? Like, I don't want to like, what? Like, no, like, no. So I grabbed the mini Creaseless Concealer in the shade 20N from Tarte. So we're gonna go and do, that's why. It is probably the thickest, heaviest feeling concealer you will ever try. And we're gonna do Huda on this side. Much thinner, great, amazing coverage. Love the finish of this one. So we're gonna go and test these two out and see what we think. This feels like coagulated paint. That's what that one feels like. I look like Jacques. Jacques from like, Bunny an email. Okay, we're gonna take our, I can already just attest this, like just listen to me when I say this. The Huda Beauty Fill Filter is amazing. It is incredible, it is amazing. I truly stand by this one. I do believe it deserves the five star rating it has. And it's been reviewed hella times too. It's absolutely incredible, incredible. Look at that, it just went like a little perfect. Now, the Tarte Maracuja Creaseless Concealer. It's very heavy, listen to me. It is very heavy, it is very thick, and it is very sticky and Gives you a very luminous, as you can see, a very luminous finish, hyper luminous. So I think this is maybe made for more mature skin because it is so hydrating, maybe dry skin, more mature skin, which both I do not have, but it is very heavy and very intense. Has a lot of coverage though. Great coverage, just very, very thick. And it's a little spooky, I will say. Let's keep it moving. So let's go on to our powder side now. Worst and best. Best rated Sephora powders are actually the Sephora Micro Smooth Powders. I ended up buying shade porcelain just so I can put it under my eyes and really you know use it. And I have this shade already, which I, I gotta admit, I'm with them on this. I think this is like the best. I think this is a dupe for the uh, MAC Mineralized Skin Finishes as well, and it's cheaper, so I'm obsessed. And then for the worst rated powder, it is the Too Faced Primed and Poreless Pore Blurring and Mattifying Face Powder. This is rated the worst. And I wonder why. I'm so curious. I did see some of the comments saying people were saying that the packaging is just so bulky and annoying. Okay, I can kind of see it. Like a little. For such a small little like powder. I get, I mean I get that, but look how cute. That's fucking cute. Stop it, that's so cute. I can understand. Like I can. I can get it. I get it. We're only gonna say our under eyes, by the way. So we're gonna take the shade Porcelain from the Sephora collection. And we're just gonna quickly set our under eyes. You guys, I love these powders. I really, truly, truly do. They're some of my favorite powders ever, and I use them all the time. So I can just, uh, that's just my personal opinion. I love them. I'm picking the shade Porcelain under the eyes to really make sure everything's set in stone. And now let's use Too Faced on the right, left. Let's see. It's a white powder. And we're gonna set the under eyes with them. Set our good old creaseless concealer. Oh wow, yeah, wow. Mm -hmm. So the left side somehow has lifted all right there. Gone, gone with the wind. Yeah. Let me try to show you guys if I can on video format. Y'all see this right here? Where'd it go? That's not happening over here, but over here. That's all gone, breaking. They are, it's breaking in half. And I think it's just a combination of the concealer and the powder. I think it just doesn't really work out very well. Uh, let's go with bronzer, huh? Let's just, let's just go with the bronzer and let's move on. I think we should. We're gonna go with our high end side now. So our two bronzers that we have acquired are these two right here. The bronzer that is like rated super, 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 super high is the NARS Laguna bronzer in the cream format. So I'm gonna be using that today. And then the lowest rated were the KVD liquid gel contour shades. And that is these right here, which I'm actually really sad that they rated that because listen, I 
am so glad that KBD rebranded and I am so happy for them. I cannot like wait to see what they do and continue to do and slay the house down boots. So that's why I'm just happy to see that they're rebranding, but it makes me sad that this is on the list. So let's go in with our NARS first. NARS Laguna on a LBF5 and we're gonna... Oh, it's pigmented as fuck. Pigmented as fuck. And okay, honestly, like, do you know what this reminds me of? Like consistency wise, it kind of reminds me of the Tan Tour by, by Huda Beauty. Like that kind of consistency, that's kind of what it reminds me of. Once you do just a little bit, they they go on really nice and they build really nice. Like even though they're pigmented as actual hell, they blend really, really easily. Do you guys see that? Like it blends like it was nothing. I freaking love these. This stays on the desk. Now let's go with the QVD. I'm nervous. I'm not gonna lie, I'm nervous. We have the shade Fair, cool. And we're gonna just go ahead and kind of draw around just like I kind of did with the other one, what I would do. And now I'll take a new clean brush and we're gonna try this out. We're gonna pat it in over the foundation. And I haven't set in these areas, so it should be okay, right? Right? I actually think that looks pretty good. So I'm a little confused about this one, actually. Let me add a little bit more right over here. I actually feel like that went on really easily and blended really easily. What do you guys think? It kind of reminds me of like, a just really soft, lightweight, bronzy tone. Mind you, yeah, the shade's a little bit more cool toned, but I feel like going on the effect is really good. I think that looks really natural and pretty. Why do they rate it so low? I'm confused, wait. I almost like want to know because I don't think that this deserves such a low rating. Huh. <laughs> so these are the Mod Con Longwear Hydrating Liquid Gel Contours. People are saying that some, so some people are saying that it's patchy and that's why to save your money, it's patchy, it's disappointing. So someone says it smells rancid. Okay. There's a lot of positive reviews though too. Blends nicely, looks good on the skin. Wish the applicator was different though. Okay. Okay, well, I personally think that that is nice. And I do think it gives a nice sheer tone to the skin. Not super pigmented, not super full coverage or anything like that. It's sheer and buildable, which I actually think looks really pretty. And I do think it gives a nice like glow, hydrating glow to the skin. For me, that this is actually not bad. This, I don't feel like deserves one big to be one of the lowest rated bronzers slash contours on the site. I really don't. Cause I think that worked really nicely. Period. Now it's one to blush top rated. And lowest rated. So one of the top rated is actually the Patrick Ta Four Face Double Take Cream Powder Bronzer Duos, which look like this. I'm gonna go in with the pinky one because the lowest rated I got was more on the pinky side. And again, this makes me a little sad, but the lowest rated is another KVD. It's the Mod Con Liquid Gel Blush version. The blush version of this. Blush version of the bronzer slash contour is this. And this was one of the lowest rated blushes on Sephora's site. So we're gonna see if, cause what if, what if it's not, what if it doesn't deserve it? Let's go in with the Patrick Ta cream side. I will say I've used these and I do like them a lot. I think they're fantastic. I'm gonna go in with the cream. That's very big. <laughs> I'm using the shade She's a Doll. And I'm just gonna pat that in with my sponge. And just really kind of melt that into the right side of my skin. Just, you know, doing dual things. Uh, now we're gonna go in with the KBD in the shade Glasscade. Glasscade? Uh, we're gonna try this on this side and we're gonna see why this was rated one of the lowest. And we're gonna see what the fuck is up. Okay, so it's pigmented, but much more sheer. I know it doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's a sheer formula, but very... It's getting everywhere. It's getting everywhere and I'm scared. Um, let's try to use the other sides. Shit. Okay, we're just trying to blend a little bit away around. That's a little intense. It's a little intense for me. So it was intense and then it blended away really easily, but then it almost blended away to nothing. What? Okay, so you know what? So when I'm looking at it, I feel like it looks pretty on the skin. I do, I do, I do. I like the Patrick side more, the Patrick Toss side more. This one just like traveled everywhere. It went everywhere, it became a disaster. Could have been user error, could have been my fault. Could have been my fault. I can understand why this was more of a lower rated one though, for sure. I can I can understand it over this side. I really, really, really absolutely can. I feel like this side definitely performs better and is a little more concentrated and easier to apply. The KVD one was just, kind of went everywhere and it became a mess. It became a mess because it's really sheer, but it also packs a punch. Confusion or you and me, Fresbone? I don't know. I don't know. Confusing though. This one's a highlighter. Best rated and lowest rated. One of the best rated highlighters on the website is actually the House Labs 
gel highlighters. These are the Bioradiant Gel Powder Highlighters, which I have used and I do love. I think these are literally incredible. I think that if you were to try these, I really think you would be absolutely obsessed. I'm gonna take the shade Peach Quartz. That's the shade I already had. So I'm like, I've already spent hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. I'm not getting another one. I'm just not, I'm just gonna put a little bit of Peach Quartz on the top of my cheekbone. I like this a lot because it gives you a radiance, but doesn't like give you a weird cast to the skin. I think it just looks stunning. I really, really do. That's fine, that's fire. I can see why these are, we're gonna top rated. These are fucking incredible. I've already talked about them and I love them. Let's go in with the product that is the least rated. This is one of them right here. This is the Makeup by Mario Master Secret Glow Highlighter. And it's a creamy, glossy highlighter. This is the thing. It is probably the stickiest, tackiest, like glowy balm. So I'm gonna go and just toss this on because it will give us that reflective, wet glow. It definitely, definitely will. The problem with this product is that it actually will take off the products underneath because it is extremely tacky. That's um, the issue. It looks beautiful on the skin. I think it looks really cool. I think it gives you that like nice, like sweaty, like glowing from within look. Like, oh my God, look how wet and glowy I am. But the problem is, is that because it's so thick and dense and sticky, it will remove the product underneath a lot of the time. Like for me, I know that product's not there. Are you there? Where are you? Oh, she's not, like from here, it's a wrap. Oh, it's a wrap. Especially with my vitiligo, you guys, I can see the vein again. The vein of triumph is going right through. This is a product that if you have literally no anything on your skin, it would work and it would look really glossy and you know nice and it probably would stick really nicely because of the fact that it is so sticky, it'd probably like really last on the skin. I'm not a fan of the consistency. This is not my kind of vibe. I want my coverage underneath it to stay there. So for me, this would be a no, dog. It's gonna be a no for me, dog. Okay, let's move on to our brows now. Okay, so one of the highest rated actually on the site is the Anastasia Brow Powder Duos. These are extremely, extremely, extremely popular. They are rated so high, five stars. And I can see why I'm absolutely obsessed with the brow powders. I think they're fantastic. They're great, great, great products. And one of the lowest rated products, I actually grabbed two of them because I didn't know which one I wanted to really use. So these are the two that are like the lowest rated. We have the Fenty Beauty Brow MVP Sculpting Brow Wax Pencil and Styler. And we have the Ilia Essential Brow Natural Volumizing Brow Gel right here. These two are rated extremely low. They're like the lowest on the whole site. And a lot of people were saying that it's because of the packaging. This one, because it's so large and so obnoxious that it is really, really hard to use for the Ilia and then the Fenty one is literally just like a little brow wax with like a comb. <gasps> Working that nine to five. We're gonna try the Fenty one. We're gonna put the brow wax through the brows. Okay, and then we're gonna use our little brow comb. So my brows are currently laminated. So for me, low key, kind of everything's gonna work. So the thing, <laughs> fuck. Okay, so about this brow gel, I'm gonna show you guys what's going on here, okay? Why do I have white flakes going through it? Like, there's white flakes all over, like in the brow hair. I don't know about that, fam. Oh my God, look at my missing foundation. Where to go? So yeah, I don't know about this one. I don't know about that one, y'all. And it literally pulled out several of my hairs from the comb part. It yanked out some of my hairs. Yeah, I don't like it. I can understand, I can definitely see why. This is rated so, there goes another hair. I mean, it definitely stuck, it's like stuck in place. It's a nice wax, but that's because my brows are laminated. If you have stubborn brows, baby, this ain't working. Oh, let me tell you that now. If you have stubborn brows like I do that are not laminated, it's not working for you. No, silly, it's not gonna work. I feel like I should use this one on the bright side just cause we've, I mean, have, you guys have seen this a gazillion times, haven't you? Like we've seen this already a fucking gazillion times. I use this all the time, it's fucking great. It's a brow powder, but I never tried this. And I'm curious as to why it's rated so low. Okay, using the other side of it, it's better. Oh Lord, okay, well, is there any product going down? In order to get any product off of this, you need to use the non-long side. The shorter side, that's what you need to do to put any product down at all. You need to use that side, do not use the longer side. But there's just, in general, not a ton that comes off, and I'm using the darker shade that they have. Huh, see the, the thing, I'll take Benefit Gimme Brow over this any day. But I will say I'll take the Ilya side over my Fenty side. I will, cause there's a little bit of tint to it, but barely any came off. Y'all, what the hell? Sometimes we should listen to reviews, huh? I think sometimes it's good to listen. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit of a spritz before we go into eyes. One of the worst rated is the Huda Beauty 
resting boss face. I have used this before. It is literally like hairspray. It works actually very, very, very well. It really sets your makeup in, but the scent is so strong. I think that's a, a big reason people hate it. This is why I don't ever use this really, because it is so, 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 so strong smelling. I don't like it. One of the best ones is the all-nighter, long-lasting makeup setting spray, the vitamin C cactus flower water, hydrating version. So a lot of people seem to really like this one because it's like the hydrating version of an all-nighter. And who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want to be hydrated, but also long-lasting? I'm gonna spritz that everywhere. I haven't used this in so long, it's like clogged. Woo! <coughs> you got this, come on. Ah! I forgot about that one. That was an out-of-body experience. Ah, oh, that was out-of-body. Oh my God, don't open your eyes during the process of that. Do not open your eyes, not this. Okay, I'm gonna go prime my eyes and clean up my brows a little bit and I'll be right back and we'll do eyes together. Okay, you guys, so I went in and I primed my eyes really quickly. I just put some concealer on and I haven't set them either because I want to really make sure shadows can grasp onto our wet ass primer, our wet ass concealer. Wet ass baby. Now we have two palettes here. I only have two palettes in my hand. And the one palette I do not call it, well, I must immediately go back to the house, pack your belongings, and go. Two of you stand before me, but I only have one photo in my hands. And I'll call only one name, and the girl that I do not call must immediately return to the house, pack your belongings, and go home. Right side, one of the most popular palettes on Sephora's website is actually the ABH Soft Glam Palette. This is what it looks like. It is absolutely stunning. I've used it several times. I think it's great. I really, really do. I think they're beautiful. And you know what was also one of the top ones was the Modern Renaissance. Those two were like the top two palettes of like all Sephora. It was insane. One of the lowest rated palettes is actually from Huda Beauty. This is the Khaki Haze palette. Really, really low ratings for this, which I was very intrigued by. I was like, I wonder why it was rated so low. I will say when you think of the shade Khaki or you think of the name Khaki, you wouldn't just think of like one slightly khaki greenish shade in the whole palette. Like color story wise, it doesn't really make as much sense to me. You know what I mean? You would think there'd be a little bit more like greenish tones. If that's my first thought immediately, I'm like, I don't get why there wouldn't be more greenish tones. Eh, what? So that's kind of strange, but I'm gonna go and take in some orange soda, burnt orange from our ABH side. This is fan, you guys, this palette is delectable. Super pigmented, super intense. These are the type of shades, you guys, by the way, that like, they're not for the faint of heart. You know what I'm saying? ABH formulations are very strong. They're very intense. They're very punchy, and you don't have to build them up super intensely to get the kind of coverage you want. Some people love that. Some people fucking hate that. You know, it kind of depends on your vibe. Now let's go with some of these. I'm very intrigued. People were saying that they felt like these weren't as pigmented. So let's go into the lid. We're gonna take the khaki shade. And we're going to put that into the crease. I personally feel like that's very pigmented. Personally, I feel like that's fucking intense. Am I tripping? I'm taking a little bit of that pink shade and blend the edges. Where's the issue so far? I'm confused. Like that is going down pigmented and it is khaki. Bitch, I am khaki. Like gagging. <laughs> Let's take that shimmery kind of greenish shade next to it. And we're gonna plop that onto the lid. I think it's pigmented. I think the issue maybe with this is the color story for people. Like, I don't feel like when you think of the name khaki, that this is the color story you would really go with for a palette that's called khaki. You know what I mean? Take a little bit of this upper corner color right here. This one's a little harder, not as pigmented. Put it in the corner. That one's not very good. Huh. Top left, not good. Mm-mm, mm-mm, not good. But the other shades, like, worked well. Like, that's nice, I think. I'm gonna take the shade bronze. On this side, I mean, these are just why These are so intense. These are just, they're not the most metallic shades, by the way. That's not what I mean by intense. They're just very pigmented, glidable, very full coverage, just very foolproof on the ABH side, very foolproof. Okay, overall, I actually think that the khaki palette from Huda is not bad. I don't understand why it has such a, such a low rating in comparison to the other palettes. I do feel like it was pigmented. I feel like it did blend easily. For me, I understand like more so the color story being a little strange, but I don't know why. Oh, you know what? You know what? So I just watched these top two shades, right? The top two shimmers, and they're not very pigmented. Got a real, you have to like almost break the first layer to even get pigmentation off on your finger. Like you really gotta break that. Really gotta break it. 
And even then they're like, okay. Mm, okay. I can understand a little bit more. The mats were pretty good. Maybe it's the shimmers that are the issue. The shimmers are the issue. Other than that one. Okie dokie, you guys. Let's do our little liners. Okay, we have a couple liner options here. One of the best top rated liners was actually the Lancome Idol liner right here. One of the worst rated liners is actually from NARS. This is the High Pigment Longwear Eyeliner right here. We're gonna take the long comb across the lid. So what I don't like about this is the fact that it is a felt tip liner. And you know what kind of trauma that causes me, you guys. You know how much trauma that causes me. But I gotta admit, this is very, it's very pigmented. Super easy to use. It's actually drying to a matte finish. Why is the tip drying out? Um, no, that's not gonna work for me. Sorry. Why is the tip already drying out? The tip's a mess. The tip is a mess. You guys know this is not giving. It's not, you guys, it's not giving. And this is the, the high end side. This is the five star side, okay? And it's not giving. Oh no, that's bad. Okay, we're taking NARS on this side and we're gonna see how it goes over. Not this being more pigmented and creamy in a pencil form. Now y'all listen here. I really like this pencil. I really like that pencil. I think it looks so great. Why was it rated so low? Let's find out. This is, by the way, this is in the shade Mambo and it's only rated two stars, you guys. It's two stars. Liner breaks every time they try to sharpen it, not creamy. Mine was super, super creamy. Someone's saying it's not really long wear. Okay, that's very valid. Flaky, doesn't glide easily. I don't, that, that's not the same for me. I wonder if there's like issues with production. Cause some people are saying it dry and flaky and some people are saying it's very creamy. I'm very confused. Cause I felt like that was kind of nice, but I will say it's supposed to be like a chocolate brown. It almost pulls maroon to me. What do you guys think? I feel like it pulls a little more maroon than like a chocolate chestnut brown. A little pinkier than I expected. I don't like that. I want it to be chocolate brown, but it, I think it looks really nice. And I had a lot of trouble over here with Miss Lancome liner. Wow, I'm shocked. Okay, so let's move on along you guys. We have our mascara next. One of the best mascaras on the website is the Lancome one. Again, Part of the Lancome family, the part, this little line. This looks really cool, I like the component. And then one of the worst mascaras, Bare Minerals. Bare Minerals Strength and Length Serum Infused Mascara. Lashy Doll on this side. And we're gonna see, this looks cool, I gotta admit. I like the wand. Oh my gosh, okay. Immediate first impression, I'm a shooky. I love the bristles. I love the separation, I feel like it's lifting. I like you. Look at that. Separates, but also th lengthens and thickens. Okay, I... Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Look how thick it's making my lower lashes. I definitely like it. You know what? It, it doesn't like... The curl doesn't stay. Like, it doesn't stay up, sadly. Most mascaras don't keep the curl up, but I gotta admit, I like this one. And it layers really nice, and I like the way it lengthened and separated. I like her. Mm. Be good to me, baby. Be good to me. What the fucking one is this? What's going on? Sometimes brands get a little too innovative with their uh, components and it scares me. Okay, so this is the thing. Because of the wand, I feel like it deposits too much. But at least you can use the sides to comb through. Honestly, like this one, I'm scared to use it because it is, the way it's just built, it just freaks me out. It's giving Predator. It's giving alien versus predator. Ew, ew. You know, it was nice for the lower lashes though because of those little spikes. Ooh, look how good it is on the lower lashes though. Look how long I made them. But let me tell you something, for the top, it's a wrap. It's a no, but from the bottom, god damn. That looks sexy on the bottom. Okay, last but not least you guys, we have lip. And here we go, top rated lipsticks are actually the Gwen Stefani lipsticks. Like they're some of the best rated lipsticks on Sephora's site, the original recipe matte lipsticks. So I'm gonna go in with that. We're gonna see. Really tugging, aren't we? Okay, so they're extremely matte, really pretty color. I will say it's like comfortable when it's on. It's very dry going on though. You gotta really, really warm it up. I wouldn't say this is like top rated five star status. It's nice, but I don't know why it's like, five stars above and beyond. You know what I mean? Like it's nice though, it is nice. And then one of the worst graded lipsticks on Sephora site is actually these by Too Faced. These are the Too Faced Lip Injection Liquid Lipstick 
Power Plumping Cream Liquid Lipstick. So people were saying that it's not plumping at all and it's just essentially liquid lipstick, but with like a gimmicky marketing tactic. So we'll try it out. We're gonna see if we feel like it's plumped. We're gonna do one side. I wanna get a red just so I can match. Oh, it goes on gorgeous coverage. Goes on gorgeous, full, full coverage. Really like that. I do feel a bit of a tingle actually. I definitely feel a tingle, bitch. So I definitely feel a tingle on this side. Not a heavy tingle, it's more of a subtle tingle. Not like lip injection extreme or anything like that. I don't know if I would see a difference in, in like the size of my lips, but there's definitely a tingle. Power plumping cream liquid lipstick. I've never used a liquid lipstick that I plumped before. And I do feel a tingle, so I know it's definitely plumping a little bit. Not a ton, but a little bit. Wow. Anyways, you guys, that is it for all the goodies I have here. Top rated Sephora goodies versus lowest rated Sephora goodies. I also have this. This is one of the top rated glosses, the Patrick Talk glosses. And I was gonna use it, but it's another volumizing gloss. And I was like, mm, should I actually? On one side. I'm not to see if it'll pull me. I should do both sides. Fuck it, dude. There is something about a glossy red that will send me. What do you guys think of the sides? Hmm? What do we think? We have our right five star side over here. I will say the liner was not giving because I do feel like it literally dried out on me. And I don't know, maybe I just got a dry version, but it wasn't the best. It was not the best. Everything else was sickening though. It was sickening. I will say the Gwen Stefani lipstick is a little bit more tuggy than I was expecting. It looked really pretty on the lips though, I will say. But other than that, you guys, I think that this side is pretty sickening. I do, I really, really do enjoy this side. I do like it a lot. I think this is definitely the side. And then we have this side. You know my face is still sticky from the highlighter. Did you know that? It's still sticky. Some things definitely make sense from this side to be like some of the lowest rated because there's a lot of products I was like, no, 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 no. But some of the things that I did actually like that were rated low, for example, the KVD, sheer bronzing contour. I thought that worked great. I think it definitely did a really, really nice job at giving me a nice subtle, cool tone kind of bronzy contour. I thought it was beautiful on the lips, on that face, on the face. So that's that. The matte shades in the khaki palette from Huda Beauty were nice, shimmers not so much. And the Too Faced Liquid Lipstick, I feel like there's definitely plumping to it. I don't think that it's gonna give you a big plump. It's definitely not like the lip injection, intense plumping situation, it's definitely not that. There's a little bit of a tingling and it might be a little bit more big, but it's definitely not like a lip plumper. It's definitely not, definitely, definitely not. So I can understand why it's marketed that way, but it is a really pretty liquid lipstick. If you want a subtle plumping, a baby, baby amount, baby amount. I really enjoyed the NARS pencil as well. This was sickening, really thought it was great. I thought it drew on gorgeously, I really did. But anyways, you guys, that is it for this part of the video. What do you guys think? I'm gonna go ahead, of course, take off my makeup and use our Alpha H baby. And we're gonna take off this, we're gonna melt this whole thing off and you guys are gonna see how easy it is to use. My whole, my face is gonna be gone. You're gonna be shook. But thank you guys so much for watching. I had so much fun filming this for you guys. I thought it was fantastic. It was actually really fun to test out some of the top rated and some of the lowest rated products found in Sephora. Some things I was like, mm, this should be higher. Mm, this should be lower. So. It was actually really, really fun. You gotta take reviews with a grain of salt. You truly, truly do. Um, some things are fantastic and they would work for you and some things might not at all, you know? And clearly some of the products that I did like here that were low rated, I enjoyed them because it worked for me, you know? So overall, I had some good experiences and I had some bad experiences. <laughs> okay, Manny, go wash your face. <laughs> Tell you guys about this really quickly. The Alpha H Melting Moment Cleansing Balm has wild orange leaf extract. It's infused with ingredients like native Australian wild orange leaf extract, bisabolol, and grapeseed oil. And it's actually made in Australia, founded by female founders, which I think is really, really, really cool. Australian born and female founded. So you can actually find Alpha H inside Sephora on Sephora.com. This is not available yet on Sephora.com, but it is on the website. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it linked down below. So you guys can check it out, see it for yourselves. It truly is the best, truly one of the best. And I don't say that lightly. I don't say that lightly. Let me tell you that right now. And the gag is too, this can be used as a little bit of a mask. Leave it on for 10 minutes and it will hydrate your skin as a little mask. So overall, I think it's fantastic. I've never seen like a makeup melting balm being able to be used as a mask as well, which I think is just really, really cool. And I love that about this. So overall, it's amazing. Check it out. You'll be obsessed. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hey guys. Yeah, I know it's spooky. That wasn't me. Yeah. 
wear the other shades. Yeah. 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 Listen. <laughs> Listen to your elders. I just turned into a horse. <laughs>